Hello, my name is Mitch Bone. I am a member of the Yellowstone County Democrat Central Committee and also the president of the Montana State University Billings College Democrats. And today I am with House District 46. Um, House District 46 person, um, Kathy Gelker. How are you doing this morning? I am um, just great. It's good to see you, Mitch. It's good to actually, see you too. It's actually House District 47. Oh, I'm sorry. 46 is where I live. God, 47. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I lived in my district. <laughs> yeah. No, 46 is where I live. I'm sorry about that. Um, so I was just, I want to start out with asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for your house seat. All right. Well, um, I am a person who's lived in House District 47 for um, over 40 years. And I have been elected three times to the legislature. Before I was in the legislature, I was the director of the Billings Head Start, which was the best job I ever had in my life. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is awesome. I've been married to the same nice man for 53 years, Dr. Paul Kelker. And we have four grown children and seven grandchildren and three extra grandchildren. Great. So just because I'm not very sure, and um, I know that there are a lot of people that don't know the districts, um, where exactly does your district start and where does it end or what are what areas of town does it encompass? Great question. Um, it starts on 12th Street North, and that's a street that's actually not paved. So you think you're out in the country. It's almost uh, to the Metra, as far east and, uh, and on the eastern border. And then it goes through all of North Park and down south into downtown Billings. So I have a number of apartments and the county courthouse and all the sort of major landmarks in, the, in downtown. Wow. And goes further west past 17th Street uh, for another couple of blocks. So it's a long, narrow place as it goes west and and all of the streets that i i uh, walk on are going up to the rims wow that's a large area <laughs> of billings <laughs> it, is. it is very large so one of my first questions here is um excuse me you've made public safety one of your big things that you've done in helena and i was just wondering what um <clears throat> excuse me how is the um how have you made it, or I'm sorry, is one thing you've made a staple of your time in Helena is trying to find a way for Montana to combat its substance abuse and addiction issues. Um, how has that improved in your, as your, in your time in Helena and what can you do to hopefully make it better in the next session? Well, that's a very important question for me, Mitch. Um, you are exactly right. I've spent a lot of time on this issue um, the, my district that I just described is one that's uh, actually impacted pretty seriously with uh, a rise in crime and the, that rise in crime has a lot to do with uh, the selling and um, purchasing of drugs. In fact, when I have been canvassing, I've actually witnessed drug deals in broad daylight just a couple of blocks from the courthouse. So that's very worrisome for me mm. and I, I get a lot of calls from my constituents in that area um, because they have concerns about public safety and these are good people who are taking great care of their homes and like their neighborhood and they want it to be safe right so i do understand that at the core of the of the problem of public safety is the whole issue of drugs and um, the Ill, Ill, particularly illegal drugs and the widespread use of those drugs, especially in people in their 20s to early 30s. That's a group that's, that's uh, very much concerning. In, in Billings, we have a great organization that has been put together by the Yellowstone County United Way. And they, it's called Connect. And what they have done is put together a really thoughtful and possible strategic plan for reducing um, the amount of addiction that we find in our county. Oh, that's great. 
is great. Uh, and they're just starting with the uh, actually implementation of the, of the strategic plan. Spent a lot of time on getting at really good data. And all of that information is on the website for United Way. But That's just the unitedway.gov or whatever? Yellowstone um, uh, United Way, yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, and one of the areas that I have been most concerned about is the access to treatment. And we do have more access to treatment in Billings than many places do in the state, but it's still not nearly enough for what we need to be doing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the other piece that I'm very interested in is uh, something that's called diversion. Folks who are being picked up uh, by the police because they have committed sort of com petty crimes uh, related to drugs could be diverted from uh, going through the whole judicial process and put into treatment and we'd have a better chance of having them get get it back on the straight and narrow and it would be way less expensive than having somebody go to jail and then finally to prison. So I'll be working on those issues and I've been closely uh, involved with the people locally in Yellowstone County who are on the streets and know what's going on. And so I'm, I'm hoping that I can be as practical as possible. But the final thing I would say on this is that we passed a bunch of bills in a previous session that were supposed to be justice reinvented. And the idea was to get people out of prison who had low level crimes and rehabilitate them often with uh, drug treatment and save ourselves a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. The problem with what we did is we made a lot of good laws and they're being implemented gradually but we didn't do an investment in the beginning to increase our ability to treat. So we're kind of going at it backwards, but we have to do this. And it, and it really has become a point where people, at least in my district, understand if you don't take action, the consequence is that you get a lot more crime. And that's not what we don't want to be. We don't want to be about that in, in Billings, Montana. No, and I have noticed recently there is quite a bit more crime downtown. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, in my district is the murder capital of Montana, which is not uh, something that you want to name. No, not at all. So another thing that I know has been near to you, as you talked about working at Head Start, is education. And you had mentioned that um, you um, <clears throat> are school funding you'd mentioned that um you think that the legislature could help with school funding especially larger districts like school district two that have some issues in their budget um what do you think that the legislature could do to help with that another great question mitch uh i've been uh, studying that this issue ever since i joined the legislature i was on a commission that looked back um, the past 10 years to see how the formula, which was changed dramatically, uh, was, was doing, was it doing all the things it needed to do. And one of the things that I was looking at was the, what's called the decrement. And the assumption is that larger schools will have savings because they are large, they can buy in bulk and that sort of thing. So the formula is set up for AA schools, the larger ones, so that the first kid receives a full amount of the money from the state and then there's a decrement money taken away from that amount down to a certain point so uh, billings for example does n never gets the full amount for every kid because it's assumed that money is being saved because of bulk buying and that doesn't really work out. The only place it maybe does work out is in buying paper and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But the services that you have in a public school these days, like counseling, um, like special ed, uh, the, the things that are um, necessary to meet all the needs of all the kids who go to public school, Mm -hmm. Those are not things that you can do in bulk and save any money. <laughs> no. They're expensive. And uh, 
we just, and we have so many children who come to school who are not ready. And uh, if, if you don't have equal amounts of money for every kid, um, you just can't possibly meet all of those needs. So I think we should take a look at, at the uh, formula. That's a big deal. Uh, the changes that were made not very long ago really were very good ones, great step forward. But the piece that was left behind was this issue of not being able to meet the needs in a fair way of all the kids that come to public school. Yeah, awesome. I agree. We all need to be given a 100% fair chance and be given the same chance no matter what walk of life, no matter what needs to be the same for everybody. Well, that's my belief as well. Um, so another thing that you've done in Helena is you are the vice chair of the Law and Justice Committee. And you've come up with a great idea, I think, that um, compensates those that have been wrongfully charged of crime. So what does that look like for you in Montana? Well, uh, this is something that, um, again, I've been spending quite a bit of time on. Um, the committee that, that started it is it, during the regular session is called the Judiciary Committee. And we had people who came to talk to us who had been um, exonerated. In other words, they had originally been found guilty and um, later on evidence was produced that showed they were definitely not the perpetrators. And then when they leave the prison, they have lost those years in their life. And often they have lost ties with family. And it's, it's a really a very, very difficult adjustment to leave prison and have no money, have no job, have no place to go, that kind of thing. And now criminal record where a lot of jobs won't hire them. That's right. That's right. It's like a badge of dishonor that you carry around with you. And so it's not a great way to start your, your new life out, out of prison. And it's also undeserved. So you can mm -hmm. imagine that a person would feel very angry and sad if they're in that position. Uh, it, right now, we really have no process for compensating folks who are in that boat. And um, I believe strongly that the state needs to have some uh, plan because any one of these people can go into court and make and have a civil suit. And we know from uh, things that have happened in Montana and in other states that uh, these uh, exonerated individuals have gotten millions and millions of dollars as compensation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and I can understand full well why, why they want to do that. So my notion is that we should have law in place so that it's known by all the folks who are involved in the justice system, including victims, that if someone is wrongly charged and put into prison, that they have a certain set of things ready for them when they leave prison and it gives them a chance to uh, recoup. They, they will never be able to make up for the years that they've lost, but if they can get a good start, those who want education should get free education in a, in a Montana um, uh, university, uh, college or university. Um, they, they need to have money for housing. They need to have counseling. Um, some of their families members may need to have counseling. There, there are lots of things that need to happen. So we're, we're working on the exact language and we are looking at some model laws. Uh, probably the best one is just, was just done in Kansas. There's a good one from Nevada that we're looking at. And we'll pull all that together and um, probably by July, we'll have a draft of the bill that either the commit committee will bring forward or I will bring forward in the next session if elected. Wow, that's awesome. It definitely sounds promising and something that needs to be done. Um, so my next question is about Medicaid expansion. That's huge for a ton of Montanans, myself included. Um, so my question is, um, why is that so important to Montana and what role did you play in it getting passed in the last session? <laughs> Well, I was a very strong supporter of Medicaid expansion. 
And I had the good fortune to be on the Human Services Committee during the session. And the bills that were um, looked at for Medicaid expansion started in that committee. So I had an opportunity, and as did the other people on that co uh, committee, to um, speak our minds. And of course, we wanted, or, likely, or certainly I wanted, um, the Medicaid expansion to remain in the same framework that it, it, it started, because we have, we have been looked at, the Montana model has been looked at across the nation as one of the best in the country. But that didn't go. Uh, that version went down, and so there was a compromised one. And um, we, we did pass it out of the Human Service Committee, and that was no small feat. There were lots of uh, folks in that committee who were definitely against um, Medicaid expansion. And the usual thing that they would say to me is, I don't want to pay the tab for someone else's uh, health care. And I would say back to them, well, wait a minute, if folks do not have a consistent way of paying for their uh, health care, who is going to pay for it? Those of us who have private insurance will be paying through the nose because the, <laughs> the doctors and the hospitals and so forth can't keep the lights on unless they have a certain level of funding. Mm -hmm. So, you know, get realistic here. It is cheaper in the long run, and that's been demonstrated over and over again, that if people have health insurance and pay premiums, just like everybody else, if they can, um, that they are going to be healthier, and they're not going to cost themselves or us more money. It makes more sense. And one other thing that's important in Bellings, Montana, is we have two very good health uh, um, sources in our two hospitals yep. and, and we are very fortunate with the access that we have and the number of specialists that we have access to and so on but it's the, a big business in our economy as well mm -hmm. it's about a third of the economy in Billings or more and it's growing so why wouldn't we want those entities that are serving us well to be uh, stable in terms of their budgets? Both of our hospitals here in Billings are nonprofits. They're not making money. <laughs> you know, right. over fits. <laughs> That's, that, they can't do that because they're nonprofits. So it makes sense that we pay the workers who um, buy things in Billings and are part of our economy that is very significant. So all the way around, it's a plus plus for us locally. And I would very, was very grateful that the bill passed. I'm sorry that it's going to be sunsetted in six years, but um, I think it should go well over time because um, the more we have it, the more we realize that we need it. And we know that so many more people are getting tested and having preventative med, uh, medication and treatment, and that's going to be make it cheaper for all of us over the long haul. Exactly, there are some things you just can't be cheap on, and healthcare is definitely one of them. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, kind of on that same front, you are a big advocate for senior citizens. Um, so, how do you hope to improve the services that our state can provide to? those in their elderly years? Uh, services for senior citizens are, should be a high priority for every legislator right now. Uh, we are headed into the tsunami of baby boomers who will be in their 80s and will be needing, uh, mo most people need some help as they age. And we are not ready and it's very concerning. We have what's called the Big Sky Waiver, which is a, a partnership with the federal government. And the government, federal government pays part of the cost and then some comes from the state. But frankly, if we didn't have the federal money, we wouldn't have much of anything at all. And so you have to send in a plan for your Big Sky Waiver. And we have, um, 
not been as innovative with that waiver as we could be. If I were queen of the world, I would want seniors to have available to them, those who are eligible for the waiver, um, options. And some of those options in the community so that they didn't have to live, live somewhere else. Like if sometimes there's a slot for the big sky waiver, but you live in Butte and the slots in Glendive and people don't want to move far away, away right. from their, their support systems and so on. And so they leave those slots empty. It, in my view, the money should follow the person. And I would like to see a real ramp up of uh, home health care so that folks can stay in their own homes for as long as possible. Uh, again, that is so much cheaper. And then the third piece of this is that um, we do put people in nursing homes sometimes in Montana because that's the only service that's available and that is the most expensive service. Uh, and again, we're, we're spending a lot of money on something that you know, it isn't giving the benefit to the person that it should. Mm -hmm. If you talk to the people who run senior services in Montana, they will all tell you that the rates that they are paid are way too low. Oh. And, and they have to compete with all the other businesses. And we have, at least before the pandemic, we had a low unemployment rate. So folks are not choosing to be CNAs in a nursing home when they can get paid more in some other facility in the community. Right. So we have to address these issues. Uh, I keep saying I don't want any little old ladies out uh, on the streets because um, we haven't had a plan. Right. So my final question for you is kind of a selfish one because I am a college student and you have both MSUB and Rocky in your district. So what do you see for the future of both of these great places of higher learning in the Magic City? Well, first let me say that we are very fortunate to, to have two uh, colleges in our, in our city. And I don't think we uh, are as respectful of, the, of how um, beneficial it is to have those entities in our community. And I'd like to see us more involved with both Rocky and MSU Billings. Uh, what I think it, um, is the future is, is gonna be a little different for each of these schools. Uh, with the leadership of Dr. Wilmoth, uh, Rocky is a very innovative small college. And the tuition is really reasonable compared to many other places. They have some unique programs. And at the graduate level, they have the PA program, mm -hmm. which, is this program which has grown significantly and is, just makes so much sense being in a community that has two hospital systems. <laughs> right, it does. And so that's very good. And, and uh, I certainly support Rocky in this um, path of, of innovation. And I'm hoping that the same kind of thing will now occur with the new chancellor at MSU Billings. And again, uh, it's an issue of getting the uh, MSUB on track to provide degrees and certificates at uh, City College, and, and, you know, whatever the, the mm -hmm. opportunities might be, but that, that they are really attached to what the industries are in Billings. We're losing our retail businesses. We're losing them to Amazon and, mm -hmm. and other online uh, opportunities. And so we have to, to place ourselves in a somewhat different way and expanding the medical devices, medical services and so forth is a really good economic idea in our city. And the more opportunities we have for training folks uh, at the local level, the better. The other piece is that MSU Billings has had degrees in rehabilitation, rehabilitation counseling, 
and human services for a long time. Mm -hmm. What is really needed as we're talking about addiction and mental health are somewhat uh, different degrees. What is more needed is um, the folks who do assessments for addiction, uh, the chemical dependency assessments, and we just don't have enough of those people in Montana. And the level of uh, intervention that we need in that field is more like for the social worker with a master's degree and we don't have that kind of degree so it would be great if they were doing nurses it would be great if they were doing psychiatric nurses it would mm -hmm. be great if they're doing some of these uh, uh, professional fields that are really needed in Montana and maybe with the new science building at MSUB they'll add a few more I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I just paid off my uh, donation to the science building. <laughs> well, thank you for the donation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just all for it. I, I, I went to school at, at MSUB and I remember all the stuffed animals and stuff in the science building and it, it was like, you know, 1950 frozen in one place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was not, not well at all or not good at all and it needs to be redone. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some cool stuff going on in the labs now. And mm -hmm. And I'm just so delighted to see that. Yeah, definitely. They're both up and coming um, universities, and I'm excited too. So, well, thank you very much for your time, Kathy, and have a great rest of your day. And just again, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. And you stay healthy. Yes, you too. We don't want anybody catching this. So, definitely stay inside and stay healthy. All right. Thank you. All right. Talk to you later, Kathy. Bye bye. Bye bye.